Hey everyone, it's Andrew from WP Shopify. And in this video, I'm going to walk you through the main WPS product shortcode. So the first thing to know is that there is a massive documentation page on all of these shortcodes that you can find here at docs.wpshop.io. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a new WordPress page that I have here. It's called Shortcode Example. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this page as an example to go through each shortcode attribute so we can get a better understanding of what the plugin does and how the shortcodes work. Now, as you can see, I have the main WPS product shortcode entered here already. And let's go ahead and see what this page actually looks like. So I have the page loaded here, and as you can see, I'm getting an output that looks very similar to the main products page. And it's very similar. It's actually the exact same layout. And the reason is because the default WPS product shortcode simply outputs the same products that the main products page does. So it's just useful to keep that in mind. If we go back to the shortcode documentation page and we scroll down to the section that says available attributes, we will see all of the shortcode attributes that the plugin offers. And there's a whole bunch of them. You can see here on the sidebar, we have them as a uh, hot link as well. So that helps. And the first one we're going to highlight is the title. The title attribute allows you to filter your products by any Shopify product title. So let's see how this works. If we go into Shopify here and pick one of our test products, copy the title here, and we'll go into our shortcode example, and we'll do title equals this awesome title. Save it, and let's view the page. And as you can see, it pulls in the product. Now this particular product happens to be out of stock. So that's why we're seeing this message here. Uh, but this does achieve what we're looking for. Now let's try grabbing another title. Let's say this one here. Going back to our page. And we'll do a comma separated list of titles. Save it. And go back to our page. And as you can see, both products come back. So the next attribute is the tag attribute. Very similar to the title attribute, it allows you to filter products by tags. So let's see how that works. If we go into our products and let's choose a product here. Now my test Shopify store has um, generated tags that don't make any sense. <laughs> so yours will probably make more sense than mine. So let's go ahead and just use this tag here. And we're going to go back to our shortcut example. And instead of title, we will do tag this tag. And if we open the page again, we can see all of the products with those tags. Now, how can we verify that? Well, we know that this product here does indeed have the tag because that's the product we have pulled up here. But let's just verify that these tags are coming through correctly. So let's search this product. And as you can see, the tag does indeed show. The next attribute is the vendor attribute. And the vendor attribute, of course, is similar to the tag attribute. Uh, but the only difference is that you're filtering by vendors. And the vendors can be found here. Now, Shopify only allows you to select one vendor. So you can't have more than one. But if we go here and we change the vendor and we view the page. We should get the same product, this product, but of course we're gonna have another product here that shares the same vendor. So let's just double check that. And indeed it's the same. Product type is also very similar. Product type here. If we choose this and we go back to our shortcode example and we do product type, paste in our test product type, and we go into our products. And as you can see, these products all contain the same vendor. We have many more vendors automotive right here. Okay, so the next shortcode attribute is available for sale. 
And what it allows you to do is only show products that are in stock. And that's what the single value here of available will do. Um, this, this shortcut attribute only takes one value, which is available. If you do not set this value, then it will show both out of stock and in stock products. So let's see how this works. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to go into our shortcode example, paste it in here. And now what this is going to do is it's going to show the first nine available products. So it's going to show the first nine in alphabetical order here. Now let's say we remove this and save it. Now we should see both out of stock and in stock items. So the available for sale attribute is really useful for narrowing down those products that you only want to show for the users. And what it allows you to do is combine it with other things. So for example, say we want to combine it with a tag, we could do something like this. And then we need to add our connective attribute that we talked about earlier. And we need to set that to and instead of or. And so now what's happening is the output is showing all products with this tag that are available. So the next shortcode attribute is created at. And what this attribute allows you to do is show products that were created at a very specific time. Maybe a niche attribute for some, but this could be useful if you have a very specific use case in your custom layout. The next attribute is updated at. This is very similar to the created at attribute. Um, the major difference, obviously, is that this is a timestamp of when the product was updated instead of created. The next attribute is product underscore ID, and this may be very useful for some people, um, but it also may be niche for others. But essentially what it does is it takes a comma separated list of product IDs. So you can have one or more product IDs, just like any other attribute. And these can be found within the Shopify product. So if we go into one, you can see the product ID is up here. So this is the ID that you would want to use. So why would this be useful? Well, if you choose to sync posts instead of just using the light sync feature of the plugin, then that means that the Shopify data that you sync will be stored in custom tables in your WordPress installation. This means that the product IDs will also be contained in that data. So if you're a developer and you're showing your products via the render API or programmatically in any way, this product underscore ID attribute will probably be very handy. For Another bonus of this attribute is that the ID does not change, whereas the product title could potentially change. So if you're worried about um, either you or your client changing the product title um, and then as a result breaking your short codes, perhaps you could use the product ID instead. Okay, so the next attribute is one of my favorites. It's called sort by, and it essentially allows you to sort your products in a number of different varieties. I won't go through all of these, but I do want to highlight some of the more useful ones. For example, price can be very useful. If you want to sort your products by the cheapest or the most expensive, then that can be something that you do. And another really useful one is best selling. There's a lot of people who want to sort their products by what sells the most. And you can do that here by just putting in best selling. And we can see how that looks. And as you can see, it is a different set of products. Let's go back to our shortcode example. And we're going to do sort by title. Now, what you'll notice in this example is nothing. The reason is because by default, the WPS underscore product shortcode will sort by title in alphabetical order by default. However, what's interesting though, is if we do something like reverse and we add true, then you'll see that it, the order has been reversed. So that's super helpful. And that can be applied to any sort by value. One of the most common attributes that you'll probably end up using a lot is the reverse attribute. And what the reverse attribute does is it essentially reverses the order 
of the products that are returned when you use a combination of other attributes. So let's use the example of showing products sorted by price. And if we go here, we're going to show the cheapest products first. But what if we wanted to show the more expensive products? Well, we can simply add the reverse by attribute or the reverse attribute rather, and we want to set it to true. Now the reverse attribute takes true or false by default, false will be used. So let's try saving this. If we load the page again, you'll see that the most expensive products are being shown first. So the products are essentially being ordered by price, but that order is reversed. So you can think of the reverse attribute as a combo attribute that you can add in conjunction with any other attribute to really add some creativity to how you're showing your products. The next attribute that can be really useful is called the connective attribute. And what this does is it determines how the products are found when combining other attributes. And like the reverse attribute, this is best shown by an example. So let's head over to our page. And let's say we wanted to show products by um, a product type called jewelry. So we could do product type and we'll paste in our jewelry here. And let's also assume that we only want to show jewelry products that are in stock. So we can do available for sale and we'll want to set that to available. And let's update that and see what happens. Now you'll see that the products are coming from the jewelry category, but we're getting the out of stock products as well. So why is this? Well, this is happening because by default, all of the WP Shopify shortcodes will use an or comparator to determine what products to show. And what that means is it's going to say, find me all of the products that are available in the product type jewelry, or are they available for sale? And if they are, show them. But that's not what we want. We want an and comparator. We want to say, do products belong to jewelry and are they available for sale? And so the way we can override that is by using the connective attribute. So we can add the and value here, update it. As you can see, all of the out of stock items are now gone. And if we load more, no out of stock items show. So the connective attribute is very powerful and I encourage you to give it a try, experiment, see what you can come up with and try to build some interesting layouts with it. The next attribute we're going to talk about is page size. And as the name implies, it's a pretty straightforward as it simply determines how many products will show per page within the shortcode output. If we go back to our shortcode example page and we add page size, let's say we add a page size of two and we view the page. As you can see, the output is limited by two and every consecutive load more will only show two at a time. Now it's important to know that the default value here is going to be the value that you have set within the plugin settings here, products per page. So for example, if we go back to our shortcode example page and we remove this and we reload the page, we will see nine products show up. And if we go back to the plugin settings and we increase this to say 12 instead, we should see now 12 products, three, six, nine, 12. And every page will also have 12 items in it as well. The next attribute is the limit attribute. And this allows you to limit the overall product output to a certain amount. And it can be really useful for building more customized pagination experiences for your store. So let's see how this works. If we go into our shortcode page and we add a page size of let's say 10, we update this, we update this and we go to the page 
we should see 10 products, three, six, nine, and 10. And of course, every page now will also have 10. But what if that's not what we wanted? What if we wanted to limit the overall number of products that get shown? And that's where the limit attribute comes in. So let's go back to our page and we add a limit of 20. We'll go back to our page and we'll see the initial 10. And if we load more, we'll see another 10, but that's it. So the overall output was limited by 20 and the pagination will stop there. Okay, so the next attribute is called Add to Card Button Color. And as the name also implies, this allows you to change the color of the Add to Card button. I'm filtering by this title so it's easier to kind of show you what happens to the color. And let's add the attribute Add to Cart Button Color. And the attribute itself takes a CSS value. So it can be hexadecimal, or an RGBA value. So we can do something like this, 000, which will be a black color. Or in fact, we could just do this, red, because this is also a valid CSS um, color value. And if we go to the page, you can see the Add to Cart button is now red. The next attribute is the Variant button color. And this allows you to change the color of the variant dropdowns. So if we go back to our shortcode example page, I'm now filtering by a product with variants so I can show you what it looks like. So if we add variant button color and we add, let's say blue, save it. You can see the dropdowns are now blue. And the next attribute is add to cart button text. And this attribute allows you to change the text of the add to cart button. So let's see how this works. I'm filtering by a new product, add some variety, and we'll do add to cart, oops, cart button text. And let's say we say, um, instead of add to cart, we'll say add to bag, And there it is. The next attribute is called hide quantity. This will allow you to hide or show the quantity selection field for any product. So let's see how that works. If we visit our example page, you'll see that every product that's available has a quantity selection field by default. And so if we add hide quantity and we set it to true, and we reload, that will disappear altogether. So you won't get the label and you won't get the input field either. The next attribute is show quantity label. And this is a very simple attribute that will either show or hide the quantity label next to the input. So if we go back to our page and we add show quantity label and we add false, that will hide the label. And if we view the page, you can see that the quantity input is shown, but the label is gone. The next attribute is min quantity. And this can be a useful little attribute that allows you to set by default a minimum quantity amount that the user must select for any product. So let's see how this works. If we copy the short code and go into our example page, paste it here. Now here we have it set to four. So if we go to this page, we can see that the quantity field is automatically set to four. And this is including every product that's outputted. And what this means is that if you go and add a product to the cart, you cannot deselect, or sorry, you cannot reduce the quantity amount. You have to, you have, to have this as a minimum. The next attribute is max quantity. And this is similar to min quantity with the obvious exception that it is now setting a max on the quantity field. So if we copy this and we go into our shortcode 
example page, we are going to set a max input of three. We load the page. Now you can see the user can still select one, two, three, but it cannot select more than four. The next attribute to talk about is the excludes attribute. And this one is probably my favorite because it allows you to hide or show the different components of a product. And I'm going to walk through each value to give you an idea of what it can do. This is the product that we're going to be modifying. And let's say we do not want to show the product description. We only want to show the product title, the price, the gallery, and all of the buy button selections. We can do this by using the excludes attribute. So if we type in excludes description and we save that, as you can see, the description goes away. Now, if we go back to the documentation, you can see that it has four other values, buy button, pricing, title, and images. And I'm going to walk through each one. So images, as you can imagine, represents the product images. Now, a product can have a gallery like this product does here, where it shows more than one image in a gallery format. Or if a product only has one image selected or set, then only a single image will show. But for the purpose of our example here, using the images excludes value will exclude everything. It'll exclude the entire gallery, as well as just a single image if it is selected. So if we go into our page again and we add images and we reload, you can see the images are gone as well. And just for the sake of example, let's say we also want to exclude the pricing and, um, and the title. As you can see, the only thing that's left are the buy button components. Now, this is a fully functioning component in and of itself, meaning you could theoretically place this anywhere on your site and it will continue to work just like normal. And this is really powerful for those of you looking to build or integrate WP Shopify in custom layouts. You can, for example, imagine this being within a theme template file that you control, perhaps in a carousel or perhaps in some kind of widget, and you want to customize everything surrounding the buy button component, but you want WP Shopify to control, obviously, this stuff. And this is the way you could do that. The next attribute is items per row. And this allows you to determine how many products or collections show per row of items. So for example, if we go into our short code page and we view the page, you can see we have rows of three. But if we go into our short code and we do items per row, and we set this to something like 10, I don't know why you'd wanna do 10, but let's do 10. As you can see, we now have 10 products per row and it's completely unusable. So let's change that to four instead. There we go. Okay, so the next attribute is show price range. And this is a simple attribute that allows you to toggle the price range component on a product. Now by default, products will show the price ranges. So for example, if you have four different product variants and each variant has its own price, the prices are going to show in a range like this. But let's say you don't wanna show that. Let's say you only wanna show the price of the first variant or the variant in the first order. You can do that by setting show price range. So let's go over here, we'll copy this, update our shortcode page, and we'll reload. Oops, sorry, I just forgot to change the value. We, we don't wanna show the price range. So if we reload, you can see that the price range is now gone. And 
it's important to emphasize here that the, the price that is showing in this instance is going to be the variant that's in the first order. So let me just show you how that works. So we're going to go into this product. And this product has four variants. And as you can see, the variant in the first order is the variant, is the price that is showing here. Now, if we go into Shopify and we change the order of the variants, and we can do that by reordering the variants here. And let's say we want to bring the large to the first order. Save that. As you can see, large is now set to first. And if we go back to our example page and reload the page, as you can see now, we're showing 6805 instead. And finally, if we go back to the short code and we remove show price range and we reload the page, and as you can see, the range is now back. The next short code attribute is show compare at. And this attribute determines whether to show the compare at price for each product or not. And we can see how it works by coming into our short code. And I've pre selected a product to make it easier to see. So and in fact, if we go to the page, you can see that we're currently showing range pricing. Now, the compare app price is generally called compare app, but a lot of people use it to show sales pricing. And I want to show you how this works. So if we go to a product, I have this product pulled up here, Aerodynamic Robot, which is this one here. If we go into the product, we can see that we have four variants. Let's go into the first one. And you can see here under the pricing section that we have a price of 14.22 with a zero compare at. Now the show compare at price is what's going to control this. So with that said, let's go back to the page and we're going to add the attribute and we're going to set it to true. And if we reload our page, we will see this 7020 that's crossed out. Now it's important to note that the compare app pricing is always going to have by default this crossed out style. And the reason is because the compare app price is used to uh, generally show sales pricing. Now you're probably wondering where the 7020 is coming from. And let's try to go find that. So if we go back to the product in Shopify, Again, we have these four variants. We have a zero compare at price here and here. So the small red combo has a 720 compare at price. And the medium white also has a 720 compare at price. And the large red also has a 720 price. So which is why we're only seeing one. What happens if you have different compare at prices? Let's try going into the large red variant and changing it to 170 and saving those changes. And we'll go back to the product and we'll reload. And now you can see that instead of a single price, we actually have a range pricing as well. And that is because obviously we have different compare app prices. We now have a range of compare app prices. So just note that when you are changing your pricing or when you have your pricing shown with WP Shopify, if you have the same price, so the same compare at price for every variant, only one price will show because it's the same price. But if you have different prices, then a range is going to show. Okay, so the next attribute is the quantity label text. And as the name implies as well, this is simply going to change the label the text label next to the quantity input field for any given product. So let's see how this works. If we copy the short code and we go to our page, um, I'm actually going to leave this one here. So I'll paste this here and just extract the attribute, paste it in here, save. And now if we go back to our example, you can see we have a custom quantity text label. And if we go here, we can remove this. If we set it to nothing, then as you can see, it just picks up the default.
So by default, quantity text, the quantity text will be shown, but you can customize it with this quantity label text attribute. The next attribute is called show featured only, and this is going to determine whether to show the product feature images or whether to show all images in a gallery format. So let's see how this works. I have an image pre, or I have a product pre-selected with a bunch of images, so we can see how it works. And let's let's actually see how it looks first. So as you can see, we have about six images here. And if we go back into the page, and we reload the page, you can see that only the featured image now is shown. So if we go into the product in Shopify, we can reorder this image. Let's say we choose this image instead, image order saved, and if we reload the page, the new image is shown. Okay, the next attribute is called show zoom, and this is a pro only attribute. So if you're a free user, you will not have access to this. But if you're a pro user, you can toggle the zoom functionality on product images by using this attribute. So for example, let's go into one of our products here and we'll view the state beforehand. As you can see, there's no product image zooming. But if we add it, show zoom, set it to true, and we reload the page, as you can see, we now have image zooming. Now the images that I'm using are very high res. So as you could see, there was a little loading indicator. If your images are super high resolution, I would encourage you to only upload um, a reasonably sized image instead to Shopify, and that will greatly improve the overall image loading within WP Shopify. Okay, now the next shortcode attribute is called pagination. And this simply allows you to toggle on or off the pagination for any given shortcode. By default, WP Shopify will show pagination for all products. But if you wanted to turn this off, you could do that with this shortcode. So let's see how this works. If we go into our page, we're currently outputting the default shortcode and we can go view the page. And as you see at the bottom here, we have this load more button, which is our pagination like this. Now let's say we wanted to turn this off. We could go into our short code, add the pagination equals false, false because we want to hide it, reload the page, and as you can see, the pagination is now gone. And it's also important to note that pagination can be set on a global level from the plugin settings. You just want to go to layout and you can set hide all pagination right here. The next attribute is called infinite scroll, and this is a pro only attribute that allows you to turn on the infinite scroll effect for pagination. If we go to our shortcode page, we have the default um, shortcode, and if we view the page, we can see that our pagination currently has the load more button, but we need to manually click it before the pagination actually takes effect. So the infinite scroll, as the name implies, and um, a lot of you are familiar with, it's going to simply load the products as the user scrolls automatically for you. So if we go into the shortcode here and we add infinite scroll and we set it to true, reload the page. Now, as we scroll, products are automatically loaded as the user scrolls. The next attribute is called infinite scroll offset, and this is also a pro only attribute, and it works in tandem with the main infinite scroll attribute. And what the offset attribute allows you to do is determine how many pixels away from the load more button until the infinite scroll is triggered. And so by default, it's set to 100 pixels above the load more before it's triggered. So let's, let's load the page and see how this works. 
So as the user scrolls, as soon as the viewport gets 100 pixels away from the load more button, then the infinite scroll is triggered. As you can see, it's getting closer and then it's triggered. Um, so we can customize this by setting it here and we'll set it to something really high like 1700 to exaggerate it. Let's save it, go back to the page, and now the infinite scroll will load much further away from the load more button as you can see. The next attribute is called drop zone load more. And what this attribute does is it allows you to put the load more button anywhere on your WordPress site specified by a valid CSS selector. Now, some of this might not make sense if you're not a developer, um, but if you are a developer, take note that this does allow you to customize where on your page any part of the <clears throat> WP Shopify comes with this concept called drop zones. And a drop zone is essentially a shortcut attribute that allows you to specify where on the page any given component should show. So in this case, we're saying where on the page should the pagination button be shown. And as you can see here, it takes any valid CSS selector and when it's set to false, the load more button will be placed directly below the product's output. So let's see how that works. So if we go to our page, we reload it, and we scroll down, we can see that this is where the load more shows by default. It'll show below all of the products. But let's say we wanted to customize that. Let's say we have a we have a use case in our theme where we want to show the load more somewhere else. So let's copy this attribute. We'll go into our page here, paste it in. And instead of using this CSS selector, let's call it drop zone. And we're going to set a page size of one to make it easier to see what's going on. So let's update this and let's go back to our page, reload. And as you can see, we're only showing one product because that's our page size, but the load more button is still showing below the products. And that's because we haven't put the proper HTML in our page yet. So let's go ahead and do that. So I have a header file pulled up in my theme and I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom here. And I'm just going to add a div with an ID of drop zone. I'm gonna save that, go back to our page, reload, and as you can see, now the load more is showing where I specified it in my theme, which is above everything else in the header.php file. So drop zones are a really useful way to customize how WP Shopify renders your products. Um, it's important to note that drop zones take a lot of precedence in some of these other short codes like the storefront. The storefront takes three required drop zones in order to be built. Um, and the search shortcode has a drop zone as well for the overall container of the search.